We are in the ruins of an old Roman barn and fairy meadow. Uh, these holes are used for grinding corn or drawing fresh water. Emperor Claudius invaded Britain in AD 43. Julius Caesar came to Britain in 55 BC, however he never invaded. He described the inhabitants as fierce warriors living on agricultural land and pastures. He described the country as rich in timber and minerals, whilst British people were not only farmers but they also made pottery and worked with metals like iron and bronze. Claudius did not lead the invasion himself but followed and gave instructions to his commander, Aulus Claudius, and watched a 16 assault on Colchester. Eleven British kings surrendered after this campaign and Britain had become a Roman province. From then on, Roman law and taxes would be enforced in Britain. <laughs> Some British rulers obviously were not happy with the Romans, such as King Cosmobius, Boudicca and Caraticus, and resisted the Romans unsuccessfully. Boudicca was the wife of King Prydestigus, king of tribe in East Anglia. When he died, his daughters were raped and Boudicca was flogged. Boudicca decided to set up a huge army and destroyed Colchester, London, and St Albans. Unfortunately for them, they lost the next battle and Boudicca took poison to avoid capture. But some chose to cooperate with the Romans as they saw the benefits of Roman life, trade and powerful allies. Before the Romans arrived, the Britons had a highly developed way of living. They were very good carpenters, farmers, metal workers and weavers. British people at the time of the invasion lived in Celtic roundhouses. Over to our reporter Joanna Edworthy who will explain. About 30 years after the Romans invaded, villas began to appear in the countryside, consisting of four or five rooms linked by a corridor. They were built of wattle and daub with roofs with stone slabs, tiles or thatch, more similar to those back in Rome but not as extravagant. By the end of the Romans' time in Britain, grand villas such as Fishbourne Palace existed very similar to the ones back in Pompeii and Rome with mosaics, gardens and baths. Large villas were often looked after by a bailiff or slave who controlled the farm and was responsible for food and produce. The main crops grown in Britain were barley, oats, rye and especially wheat. Most farms also kept cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, dogs and horses, as well as hens and geese. The animals provided leather, wool, fertiliser, clothing, bone tools and security. Bees were kept to make honey to sweeten fruit, food. The Romans also brought lots, lots of fruit and vegetables like cherries and peas, celery, cabbage, radishes, carrots, cucumbers, beans, broad beans and walnuts. Romans cooked on charcoal stoves. Olive oil was important. So were olives, figs and grapes. Wine was also imported although the Romans attempt to grow vines in Britain. The British villas could not produce everything, so leather, meat, timber and honey could be traded for shellfish, salt, wine, pottery and ironware. Mining was also another big business in Britain and the slaves who worked there had the hardest life out of all the slaves. They often worked there as a punishment for crimes and eventually died. Slaves belonging to Roman people were mostly British, but some skilled slaves were imported from abroad. Before the Roman invasion, British people lived in tribes, ruled by a king or a queen, and they were controlled by a chief town. Chief towns normally had warriors who were good at hunting animals and attacking other tribes' settlements. Druids were religious priests who solved tribes' disputes and acted like a judge. Druids encouraged resistance to Roman and held ceremonies for their gods in the woodlands and maybe even included human sacrifice. An important governor called Agricola tried to improve relations between the British and the Romans and made it his mission to build temples, forums and houses. He also taught the chief's sons Latin so they would understand the language instead of hate it. British towns started being built in Roman style with the Roman grid system, forums and public buildings like the ones in Roman Gaul. Lots of roads were also built across Britain which improved trade between Roman. Here are some pictures from our trip to the British Museum and the Museum of London. And here are some pictures. 